Here's a gaff recap of Joe Biden's overseas trip. Uh, this man, he's humiliating us. And um, he's humiliating us. He's saying things that are downright nuts. He's clearly uh, on his way. And um, I mean, in the Democrat Party, you notice they don't say a damn thing. Now, the rank and file don't seem too happy with Biden, but they don't say a thing. Pelosi says he's perfect. Well, she would. She's uh, got a few loose marbles, too. You ever see her? <laughs> what is that show with those two uh, cartoon characters? Butthead. Beavis and Butthead. Which is the one that, hey, <laughs> which one is that? Beavis? Well, she's Beavis and a Butthead. All right. Go. For God's sake, this man cannot remain power. The White House trying to make clear in the aftermath, or making very clear in the aftermath, he was not, in fact, calling for regime change. And you're going to see when you're there, and you, some, some of you have been there, you're going to see, you're going to see women, young people, standing stand in the middle of the front of a damn tank. White House officials are telling us that President Biden does not intend to send U.S. troops into Ukraine. If chemical weapons were used in Ukraine, would that trigger a military response from NATO? It would trigger a response in kind. The United States has no intention of using chemical weapons, period, under any circumstance. And he came back and uh, he had to walk it back, the issue about uh, Putin being removed. I have no problem with Putin being removed. I guess I'm in the minority although I think a majority of you agree with me, not by us, but if uh, one of the people around him want to cap him, why would we be upset? He keeps threatening us with nukes. He's slaughtering more people. That's what he's been doing for 20 years. Um, he is a war criminal. He's committed atrocity. He's got a genocidal mentality. You may not know it because the media is getting bored with the war in Ukraine. They're getting bored with the buildings being destroyed and the people being slaughtered. So they're moving on to stuff like Will Smith. Wow, did you see him at Chris Rock? And then he apologized to Chris Rock. Oh my goodness. My, oh my. What are we going to do? Who the hell watched that? Matter of fact, the ratings came in for Life, Liberty, and Levin on Fox. Another killer night with over 2 million viewers. And I think the Academy Awards had the second lowest viewership in its history. I mean, they, they've, again, they've taken another tradition, whether it's Disney or whatever, and they've destroyed it, the far left. And you got three stooges up there, three women up there going, gay, 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 like, uh, like DeSantis is uh, outlawing saying the word gay. Of course he's not. But I like his comeback to them. Did you see his comeback? He said maybe they been, should have been paying more attention to what uh, Weinstein was doing. You know, uh, maybe if they weren't so woke, they would have spoken out against him. DeSantis is quick, and he's smart. He's nobody to mess with, but they hate him, and they'll attack him. Uh, they'll attack any Republican. That's the point. Can you imagine if a Republican were like Joe Biden? The media would be demanding his removal. The media would be going on. They'd have their psychologists and psychiatrists and their neurologists. They'd have... Uh, you know, pictures of the brain and pictures of dementia to pictures of this, that, and the They tried to pull that on Trump, remember? Remember, what was her name? Lee. Something Lee. I know I interviewed her. She got very mad at me. Uh, and they put a book together, which you're not supposed to do since that's not your client and you've never really interviewed them. Doesn't matter on the left. This is what they do. Now, just in case Joe Biden isn't sure what to say about his screw-up, as you can see on your, on your screen, he has this note card. And I noticed when I bumped into him on the Amtrak train before he was running for the Democrat nomination for president, he had, this is what he does. He has a, a, a long piece of paper, a note card, where they do the talking points. So you don't have to read all the way across the paper. And so the talking points have to be succinct. So, just in case, they gave him his talking points. This is frightening. You know, they used to talk about Trump. He's near the red button for the nuclear weapons. We had nothing to fear with Trump, but this guy, 
You don't hear them say, well, he's near the red button with the nuclear weapons. You don't hear him say that, do you? The fact is his staff is controlling him. Every now and then he'll pipe up. Every now and then he'll put his foot down or his foot in his mouth. But the fact is he's got an enormously radical staff at the White House, an extremely radical uh, a, a political pointy entourage. He's appointed in one cabinet department after another. It is, it, it is a disaster, the radicals he's put in place. And apparently this new Build Back Better bill they want to pass, it's not that much cheaper. Mansion's all in now, has massive changes to our economic system through the nomenclature of climate change, of course, massive changes. Massive tax increases. An analysis was done, said if he gets what he wants, it'll be the biggest tax increase in American history. Bigger than FDR, World War II. Bigger than when Lincoln first put in the uh, income tax to fund the uh, uh, union side of the Civil War. The biggest income tax increase in American history. Now think about this. Inflation through the roof. Prices through the roof. This massive dislocation of our economic system with the government intervention and spending, the war on fossil fuels, the war on, on any uh, business amalgam, like big meat, you know, comes up with fr like big meat, like big stupid right there. So you get the point. But don't worry, we're going to have a 20% minimum tax on billionaires, and some of you may be applauding. But that includes unrealized income. Some of you have pensions. Those pensions are invested in mutual funds. You're not necessarily watching the stock market and everything. So at the end of the year, when you pay your taxes, you don't pay on your stock unless you cash out some of your stock and see if you made a profit. You'll pay a capital gains tax or something like that. What they would do here is what they proposed a year ago for all of us, but just do it with the billionaires. Unrealized gains would be taxed. What does that mean? That means at the end of the year, if your stock shows an increase, even though you don't sell it, you're paying an income tax on the increase, even though you don't sell it. So what is that going to do to the economy? Kill the stock market, for one. Kill the real estate market, for another. Because that means if you have an increase in the paper value of your real estate, because you have county assessors that come around and say, you know, your property's worth this, and that. That means you're going to pay more if you sell it in income taxes. I mean, I mean, the dislocation that would occur here is unbelievable. If somebody comes, uh, you get the point. The point is, you don't actually have the cash. You don't actually have the income. It's what is said your income was on December 31st at midnight. So that, that is going to create an enormous uh, disaster. And it's immoral because you haven't actually realized the wealth. Uh, you people in, in, uh, with bitcoins and uh, other investments of that sort, you're going to be taxed. Let me put it to you this way. If they can get a foothold in there with billionaires, they're going to get a foothold in there with everybody. Now, I am really of two minds on this too, though. These billionaires, for the most part, who do they vote for? the Democrats. Where's all this dark money coming from? Multi-billionaires and people worth hundreds of millions of dollars, Democrats. These corporatists, who are they siding with? Mostly Democrats. So on the other hand, you think, you know what? These people want Biden. These people want the Democrats. Screw them, right? The only way to stop them is if they're punished. Then on the other hand, I say, what is this going to do to our economy when we're facing Russia and China and Iran and all the rest of them? So I'm kind of of two minds on this, but I do worry that it'll create this foothold, this acceptance when they enshrine such a thing. And because the billionaires can't beat it, trust me, the middle class won't be able to fight it off because they rely on beating the hell out of your finances as an excuse. So what does this say? Biden had to have, I was not articulating a change in policy written verbatim on a note card so he wouldn't screw it up, and he still screwed it up. For all this and much more, sign up for Levin TV.